The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. Brock Bowers has officially had his visit with the New York Jets. Adam Schefter weighed in on the significance of the visit. Plus, we got a lot of other Jet topics to dive into. My guest is Frankie V, the founder of U Stadium. So, Jet fans, let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. Lead Jets Green each and every day. This is not the same old Jets. We have Aaron freaking Rodgers. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Chat, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jets bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Ashman Show. Ah, uh, here we go. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. We're under 50 subscribers away from 37,000. Thanks to all the great Jet fans for their support each and every day. First show on the day earlier, Robbie Sabo from Jets X Factor joined us. So check that out when you're done watching this show right now. Because joining me now is a man who is a big time fan of the New York Jets. He's the co-founder of the sports media website, U Stadium. Frankie V joins us now. What's up, Frankie? Jake, I miss you, my man. I miss you. Last time I saw you, we were in Vegas at Circa, man. Now uh, we're back in New York, you and I. So, uh, yep. Well, do you want to come to Circa next week? Uh, I'll be out there again. You know, you're more than welcome to come out and join me. 100%. The (laughs) problem is we're doing a stream ourselves. So I want to come, though. I I, I would love to. You should have told me this a month ago. I wouldn't have planned our stream. Yeah, well, don't worry. (laughs) How how, How about a summer trip to Vegas? phenomenal i am in you don't have to ask we'll make, me twice just, we'll make just, it just venmo request me i'm in <laughs> so <laughs> as we see there right now frank yeah i mean i'm sure you're kind of draft out like many of us are nine days to go oh, but man. who's counting and of course this time of year it's rumor season it's lying season you never know the different twists and turns the different things that are being put out there and a lot of it is put out there to try and you know basically drive down the value of a prospect. So maybe maybe they fall to a specific team that actually values said prospect. So keep that in mind, of course, this time of year. But I found this to be interesting yesterday. So Adam Schefter was on SportsCenter reacting to Aaron Rodgers reporting for the voluntary workout and also providing an update on the significance of Brock Bowers visiting with the New York Jets. Aaron Rodgers showed up there today to begin workouts for the team. Remember, he tore his Achilles last year. All signs point to him being ready for the start of the season. The Jets are putting an awful lot of hopes on Aaron Rodgers. They need him to be healthy for this upcoming season. And as they continue to host visitors to decide what to do with the 10th overall pick, today they entertain the Georgia tight end Brock Bowers, who is projected to be a top pick in the upcoming draft. The Jets will have options. Tight end will be one of them. And Brock Bowers is a multifaceted weapon that the Jets certainly could find good use for. I'm sure Aaron Rodgers would love to have him. And probably not coincidental that they have Brock Bowers in the first day that Aaron Rodgers is back. I'm sure the two men could get to meet and spend a little bit of time together. So a couple of things there, Frankie. Schefter at the end saying uh, not coincidental. So they wanted Aaron Rodgers to meet with Brock Bowers. I don't know if I buy that because Brock Bowers' schedule is all over the place based on all the other teams he's meeting with. So I don't know if Schefter maybe has a good relationship with Bowers' agent, trying to little prop him up a little bit, maybe drive up the hype for him to go in the top 10. But I don't think one has anything to do with the other. Am I nuts? Or do you think the fact that Rodgers was there for voluntary workouts on day one, that's why they wanted to have Bowers there? Because, I mean, why wouldn't Rodgers want to meet with Roma Dunze, who visited last week, for example? Like, what? To me, I don't understand why, oh, Bowers, that's why we need to get Rodgers in the building to meet with him, you know? 
Yeah, no, I agree with you, man. And why would you want to tip your hand? Like, if you really want Brock Bowers, why would you make it, you know, uh, make him come in on a day that uh, you're, you know, uh, re re releasing your new logo and having Rodgers in there? Like, why would you do that on the same day and tell the world that you want this guy um, as bad as you do? Like, why would you do that? So why, you know, I don't get that part. And also the Jets, it's not like a free agency visit. You're trying to get to know the guy. Does it matter if Rodgers is there or not? If you draft him, he has to play for you anyway. So I don't think it's a, it doesn't make much sense to me at all. It just, it's, it's a, just another storyline, man. They're always trying to put storylines on us all off season. Now, stops. the other thing that Schefter said that I got to call him out for, listen to the beginning of this clip. Aaron Rodgers showed up there today to begin workouts for the team. Remember, he tore his Achilles last year. All signs point to him being. Remember, he tore his Achilles last year. Adam, we didn't forget. Remember he tore his Achilles last year. It was one of the worst moments of my life, Adam. Believe me, <laughs> we did not forget that the Jet season effectively ended four plays in, and we were stuck watching one of the worst quarterbacks in the history of football play for most of the season. So, no, Adam, uh, we, we did remember not forget. He tore his Achilles last year. Oh, we remember. We remember it well. Unfortunately, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare that I'll never get over unless they win a championship with Aaron Rodgers. They want to keep us down, man. They want to keep us down. The more yeah. they keep us down, the more we click their stupid articles. It's always how it is, dude. Jets and I like checks, I, I like Schefter personally, but I'm I just saying, too. come on, Adam. Come on. <laughs> remember when he tore his Achilles? No, we forgot, remember Adam. He tore his Achilles last year. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I yeah. mean, unfortunately. <laughs> That's ridiculous, actually. Remember when he tore his I do, Adam. I was there. It was awful. Yeah. And and Neil from Garden City told me it was a sprained ankle. He'll be back for the second half. <laughs> I bet you people in other countries that don't even watch the NFL know that Aaron Rodgers tore his Achilles. Don't worry. You need to remind us. It, well, it, it, when that happened, I, I'm sure it was the same with you. Like, people I haven't heard from in years were, like, reaching out, like, almost like a family member died. Like, I'm so sorry. My condolences. Like, it was... It was out of control, and I never want to relieve that again. So, yes, Adam, I still remember what remember happened. Remember he tore his Achilles last year? <laughs> God. That was such a weird night, man. I, I remember that whole night. Like, I remember every, you know, every 10 minutes of that game, man. I just, I remember I was with Nick Spano of U Stadium, his brothers, my friend. Everyone was just, like, in shock. But we won that game. So, it was, like, at the end, I'm, like, I don't know if I should be ecstatic or I should be depressed. I was, like, I was, like, too... Two emotions just kind of combining, and I was just neutral. I was like, ah, whatever. Yeah, it. It just just unbelievable. <laughs> just unbelievable. Only now, us, man. Only us. I hate saying it like that, but. It's yeah. true. Hey, all right. So wh where do you stand with the, the Brock Bowers discourse? If the Jets took him at number 10, would you be satisfied? Would you be excited? What would the mood be if the Jets drafted Bowers at 10? Listen, man. All right. I would like it. I like I'll, I would like it for one reason. I trust Aaron Rodgers, and to me, this season's all about Aaron staying healthy. So if Aaron can stay healthy, even though I'm not a Nate Hackett person and I don't trust him to be able to scheme up Brock Bowers, I do trust Aaron Rodgers, and I think Rodgers will want to get the ball out um, early and often. Like he's going to want to throw a lot of balls, and he's going to want to get the ball out quick. I think Brock gives us another dimension where I don't see it from anyone else really outside of Garrett and if, not counting Brees, but I don't see anyone across the middle of the field. I don't really see anyone being able to play in the slot. I think Bowers just gives us something there. Now I will say though, Jake, I do have a big board. So I have Roma Dunze first. I have Joe Alt second. I have Olu Fashanu third. And then I have Brock Bowers fourth. I'm fine with those four. So I think the Jets at 10, if one of those four is there, you take one. Then I have Latham right after Bowers. At that point, maybe you can entertain a trade back. But Bowers is good, man. He's good. He plays the position the way that the tight end positions played in the NFL. Whereas Kyle Pitts was being projected to redefine the position. Bowers looks a little like Kittle, looks a little like Kelsey, looks like Gronk, a smaller version. So you can kind of see the transition into uh, being a, uh, a top NFL tight end, top six or seven. But we do have Tyler Conklin, so if we don't take him, I'm not going to you know cry myself to sleep about it. But I do think the Bauer boys, I don't know if I'm <laughs> part of that, I do think they've 
made even me annoyed to want to discuss the guy. Like I, I'm, I don't want to hear his name anymore. But I do like him, and I do like him a lot. Honestly, did you, did you say uh, Bauer boys? Did somebody say Brock Bowers? <laughs> <laughs> that guy's the man gary is the leader of the Gary's power boys on on youtube and sack exchange on twitter the two you know cult leaders of the bauer boys but <laughs> look i i understand his appeal i'm terrified of the jets taking a tight end that high and i know he's more than a tight end i get it but still i just i think it's too risky i rather trade out take the best offensive line of 10 or Trade up and get a Dunze if that's your guy. Or maybe he's just there at 10 and they could take him. But, man, I just – it doesn't feel like in an all-in year the Jets could tempt fate with such a boomer bust type of pick at that position, even though I get it. He does more than just be a tight end. But still, like, this guy's got to be one of the best tight ends in the league right away. And then, like, you're going to end up having to pay him like he's a top tight end because he's the 10th pick in the draft. So, like, it's a significant amount of money you're investing into that spot. Like, the positional value is just not there. So – it, you better be sure this guy is like Kittle, Kelsey, Laporta from almost day one, basically, if you're taking a guy that high. I do agree with you. I do. Um, however, I do love this kid's game. The one thing for me that's going to separate him from being an average to above average tight end to being an, a potential elite tight end is, is the yak that he got at Georgia – going to translate to the NFL. All the broken tackles you've seen him, you know, have as balanced as he is, is he going to be able to do that in the NFL? If the answer is yes, then he's going to be a top six to eight tight end in football. If the answer is no, or not really there, then I think if he's not worth a top 10 pick. I do think it's a high risk, high reward sort of pick. I definitely do. Uh, I think it's a high floor. Uh, excuse me, a low floor, high ceiling sort of pick. Yeah, he's got to be. I mean, he's got to be great right away. Look, if they, if they make that type of investment, then they're telling you they think he's every bit as good as you know one of the five best tight ends in the league. You know, because that that's what you're saying if you take a guy at number ten when you don't have a second round pick. You know, like you have needs at on the offensive line and receiver, and you're going tight end who yeah could be a receiver for you. But you know what I'm saying? Like that is a really bold pick for Joe Douglas to make in an all in year. Yeah, and it's very on Jets like to make a pick like that. I just it doesn't really make much sense to me for us to take a tight end tenth. But everyone's mocking us that that I trust right. to get powers at ten. So I'm like I'm kind of all over the place with this pick, man. Um, but I'll tell you this: I there's one thing about Brock Bowers that at least we can all agree on. He's a tough football player. He's not going to go into the NFL and a safety or a linebacker that tries to take his head off is going to intimidate him and he won't want to play football or is going to you know, overthink his route running, et cetera. Like he's going to be able to come in and at least provide some value. Conklin's tough too, though. So like we have someone there that's good enough. But Jake, we need a slot receiver, man. Like, and and my, my problem with taking an offensive lineman at 10 is – uh, let's say outside of Alton Fashanu is are we really going to have to wait until 72 to then take uh, another weapon, a wide receiver? I don't want to wait that long. And, and and I think a lot of these receivers may fly off the board and is trading up going to be feasible. Is it something we we're actually going to do It's people project we are, but that's easier said than done. So that's where I'm kind of, uh, we could go offensive line, but then we're going to wait till 72 and Ricky Pearsall, who I really like is projected to go now in the sixties. And I do like Tez Walker. I love Jacob cowing, but are they really going to, you know, move the needle for Aaron? So I wish we had a second round pick, but we have Aaron. So I don't really care. Honestly, if he yep. stays healthy, we're good. That's it. That's all I give a shit about. Honestly, this year's. Well, that, that, that's, that's really it. Right. I mean, like yeah. so much about the jets, like people could talk about all the other things, but like, I'm telling you the chiefs would not be the chiefs. If they lost Patrick Mahomes in the fourth player, of their season, I don't care how good of a coach Andy Reid is or how good their defense is. You're not winning the super bowl without your franchise quarterback. So like they got to keep Aaron healthy. That's why to me, offensive line should take priority over Bowers. I get the appeal. I don't think the jets can afford a luxury pick, which is what I view that it with that, that type of pick being and what's such an important year for them. Yeah, Jake, how many offensive linemen do you have in front of Bowers if you were to select? You don't have to, I mean, like, hypothetically, what do you have? You have, like, 
two guys, three guys? Because I have two guys. So do you have three, four? Like who? All Fashanu, Fulaga, and Fatano. Like, wow. Okay. Yeah. You have Fulaga and Fatano. Okay. I mean, I, I Fatano to me is like my, maybe my favorite offensive line that's a prospect that's realistic because I think Alt's going to be gone because I like the idea that he could play every position on the line. So it's like you're. You're basically think of it like a six man in basketball. Like that that's an unbelievably important position. And also, how come no one talks about the fact that, you know, like John Simpson's on a, a two year deal. He had his one his first good season this past year. Morgan Moses is thirty three on a one year deal for five point five million. Like you mean to tell me if Fatano came in and dominated, he couldn't find a way to get on the field at some point sooner than we think, you know? Like Yeah, hundred would- percent. No, I agree with that. And Tyron Smith's not going to practice every day. He might not even practice at all. So if you're going to take a left tackle, even though Fatanu's projected to be a guard, but he's going to get a lot of practice reps too. So the offensive line thing makes sense. They're going to get a lot of reps. Yeah, that's very true. Today's sponsor is a sponsor that is returned for the month of April. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome back Mando Body Odor, Deodorant, 72-hour body control. From my friends over at Mando. You guys heard me talk about Mando last month. I've been using it since I moved. 72-hour odor control from Mando. You could use it on your pits, your package, your feet, your cracks. I'm just telling you what the copy says, but I'm putting my my true authentic spin on it. All right. They got the wipes, they got the creams, and they have the classic stick deodorant. You can get everything you see on the screen right now as part of Mando's starter pack. Get it 40% off when you use my promo code Jake Asman at shopmando.com. Once again, this is the preeminent deodorant. So you do not stink for hours. Why are we only using deodorant on our pits, by the way? I mean, why don't we use deodorant on our feet? Why don't we use deodorant on other areas of our body? That's what Mando's here for. So check it out, folks. Shopmando.com and use my promo code Jake Asman. That's just my first and last name. So you could get yourself a discount. I got the creams right here. I just took a nice little walk through Central Park on this beautiful day. And I don't smell because I was rocking Mando's. Shout out to Mando for jumping back on with us here in the month of April. And once again, folks, shopmando.com, promo code Jake Asman. So you get that discount on the starter pack and get all the products you just heard me talk about. Let's bring Frankie back on right now. Comments, questions, super chats for Frankie. And look what's already happening in the chat. King and Dreams is back for more. He goes, let's go, Jake. I chopped it up with Jake a bit over the phone. He's a real one. Shout out to Frankie V. Boom. But King and Dreams is back for more. Because five memberships were gifted right away by King and Dreams. And then another five as Radio. Back to back. Were just gifted. I mean, King and Dreams is saying this. Show me the money. Show me the money. Money, money, money. Uh. Time for some shout outs, folks. The following people have just officially became as maniacs, courtesy of you guessed it, King and Dreams. Matt Shaw, Brett Steele, Tony G. Rasta Dread 305, Kyle Smith, Devin Robinson. Let's keep it rolling. That was only the first five. The next five, Jimmy from Seattle, the P word assassin, Robert D. That's our guy, Rob from Glenhead, LA, David Aaron. Congrats, congrats, congrats to everyone who is now officially an Asmaniac. I mean, Frankie, it's been crazy on this show, man. I mean, King and Dreams has got more money than God with these memberships. I've never seen anything like it. He went back to back to back because he super chatted, then he. Gifted two different sets of memberships. Unreal. Guy's guy's a real king, man. Crazy. King, king, and- King-ish. He wants to know, drafting a running back in the fourth round. Thoughts? Any any running backs appeal to you in this draft, Frankie? You don't need to work on them? Yes. I love a few guys late. I actually like some of the later guys more than I like the earlier guys. So, number one, I like Braylon Allen. think he's a great James Conner kind of back that will really complement Brees Hall very well. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd out of USC is a burner. He's someone that pops on film, has some injury risk because how quick and elusive he is. And maybe my favorite sleeper back is Ray Davis out of Kentucky. I love his vision. I love how he sets up his blockers. I love that he's not so um, anxious when he has the ball to you know, hit the line of scrimmage right away. He sort of sets things up and is a bit patient. 
So I like the running backs later in this draft, Jake and King of Dreams, more than I like some of the guys at the top. Like, I'm not a big Jonathan Brooks and, and Estime and Corum I'm indifferent on, but Braylon Allen, Marshawn Lloyd, and Ray Davis, if we can end up with one of those three, I think later and maybe even the fifth, I think we're cooking for uh, – and we're helping out, you know, big big Brees back there. He's we got to get him some help. You know you're a baller when K&D super chats in just to say, hey, call me K&D. <laughs> yes, these guys balling. This is like five it. in a row. Bring him in. Love- I'll spam. leave, honestly. <laughs> and, uh, you stay right you there. <laughs> uh, Spamuel Johnson checks in. How do you feel about Yak God, Malachi Corley in round three? Is Corley projected to go in the third round? I've seen him kind of all over the place. I've seen him all over the place, too. But I think, yeah, I mean, some mocks have him going in the late two. Some mocks have him going in the third. So uh, I don't think he'll hit the fourth, obviously. But, yeah, he should be an early third-round pick potentially a late two. He reminds me a little bit. He's a little bit like a hybrid of uh, if you were to combine like AJ Brown and Brandon cooks together in, in, in a weird way. Um, very good player at Western Kentucky. I also actually, ironically enough, I like their quarterback Austin Reed as like a late, late seventh round uh, quarterback. Who's a gunslinger. And he targeted Corley to death and Corley came up big every time, literally. So, I really like Malachi Corley a lot. Um, big, okay, sorry, go ahead. No, that's it. That's it. Uh, big fella checks in. Bro hasn't heard of Troy Fatato. He's heard of Troy Fatato, big fella. Your thoughts on Fatato as a prospect, Frankie? Love him as a guard. Do not like him as a left tackle. How I come? Just, because I think he doesn't have the base as a left tackle. I think he depends so much on his feet and his physical attributes. He almost has to do too much to prevent the edge, especially in a bull rush scenario, from getting to the quarterback. Like when you watch Troy Fatanu pass block, he attacks instantly. And Rosengarten does too. I think that's how they were taught at Washington to attack versus to lay back. But Jake, he's like getting into guys. He's trying to hit their hands down. He's punching them. I like that. But when you have to do too much and then you look at a Fashanu or Latham that they just naturally, once they get their hands on you, you're not going anywhere. So... But Fatano is a great prospect, man, and he's what you were saying. He can play every position on the field, basically, uh, on the offensive line. So, but I don't like him as a left tackle, and I w- and, and I rather at ten get a prototypical left tackle to sit behind Tyron and get those practice reps. Totally fair. Matt Shaw checks in. Are you comfortable with Izzy Abanaconda as RB two? You know what? I have no idea. I, I don't know how to. It's like a TBD. I, I don't know. We I don't know what say, he is. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I, I have no clue. I wish we played him a little more towards the end of the year, but I, I don't know who he is. I don't know what he does well necessarily. He's got something. I don't think us, you know, getting. Uh, I don't think us using Izzy as a RB two is a bad thing. I don't think it's gonna like make or break the season. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. I would rather if we can, if one of those kids I mentioned earlier can fall to round five and we could take them late um, day three. I, I would look into that, but I don't know. Some breaking jets news for those who are interested here. Let me hit the breaking news sounder. Joe Douglas will hold his pre draft press conference Friday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time. The press conference will be held in person at the Atlantic Health New York Jets training center. So Joe Douglas will meet with the media for his annual pre-draft presser this Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. So I'm probably going to adjust my content schedule now to go live maybe right after that press conference. So there you go, Jet fans. We'll get, we'll, we will hear from potential Bauer boy, Joe Douglas, Friday at 10 a.m. What question would you ask Joe Douglas? He's going to not tell you a lot because it's lion season, but what would you want to ask him? <laughs> um, are you thinking about trading up at all? Is that something you would entertain in this draft? You know, Frankie, we're going to do what's in the best interest of the team. Yeah, that's how he's going to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a great, not the best question, but hey. I don't know. You know, I, I would, you know, in all seriousness, I would ask him how comfortable do they feel 
with the offense and um, how many, you know, or, or how much are they looking to do with the offense at this point from a roster perspective? Do they feel like their offense is ready on paper or do they feel like they need to completely, you know, bring in some other pieces, et cetera? Because I don't know yet what the Jets are going to do. I mean, everyone's projecting, when you look at mock drafts, the first three picks are offensive players. You have a weapon, you have an offensive lineman, you might even have two. They might take a corner in the third round. Like, they might take a a defensive tackle. We don't know. So I'm kind of curious where Joe D and, and, you know, where Joe D's head's at and some of those, you know, scouts in there. What what, are they looking completely offensively? I I don't, I would probably say no, but I'm kind of curious there. Once again, King and Dreams has gifted another five memberships. Folks, we are up to 15 memberships that have been gifted in this episode of the program. Once again, all the love to KND. Money, 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 money. The following five listeners are officially as maniacs. King Blaze, Lou Rodriguez, Jonathan Buckner, Lucas Ford, and Julian Harris. Shout out to King and Dreams, KND, for his support. Hopefully everyone's enjoying the Asmaniac perks. Check out A Day in the Life of Mr. Bonesy, a video I posted up for members and Patreon subscribers earlier today. Classic, classic time visiting the great Mr. Bonesy in the shoe store. The big fellow wants to know, to has a question, not for us, but for Joe Douglas. Hey, Joe, why is Zach still here? Yeah, I'm sure he'll be asked about Zach Wilson. Um, look, at the end of the day, to me, the inflection point has always kind of been day three of the draft when they'll probably eat some of the money and swap a seventh for a six with someone next year. You know, like I, I feel like at this point, that's kind of where this is headed. I don't really see much more to you. No, I could agree there. Yeah, it's just a situation. It's it's more difficult to get out of than we probably thought. So it's just he's never leaving, man, it seems <laughs> like. I forgot he was on the team. I, literally, I, w- w- that question kind of reminded me still on the team. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't see him on the roster week one, but would you be shocked if he was? I mean, yes, I would. Yeah. Well, Stunt. I hope so. <laughs> Stunt. I it just seems I, like we I can't think, get rid of this guy, man. Yeah, I, I, I think he's gone. I did like the fact that the Jets posted a photo of Tyrod and Rogers, you know, at the workout yes. today, and I'm like, huh, a new QB too? You tell me. <laughs> Have you noticed they haven't assigned a number for Tyrod yet because they're waiting to move Zach so Tyrod can wear number two? Yep. So you think we're going to have to attach, uh, what, a sixth? Take uh, six and Zach, take a take a seventh, just so someone could take on his salary? Is that I think it's probably it? – no, I think they're going to have to put eat some of the salary. I think it's going to be like Zach and a seventh for like a sixth and the Jets eat half his money, maybe more. Damn, it sucks. So we'll eat, what, like five and a half? And the six Jets probably million. have to eat like three million of it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that that's what happens. I mean, when you swing and miss, I don't blame Joe D for the pick, but when you swing and miss on a, on a quarterback and you keep him around this long and other teams now they're doing their diligence on Zach and they're looking into his film, is this kid even worth you know bringing him in, you know, and him being a third quarterback on our roster? They look at the film and they're like, "We don't see it. This kid stinks," quote unquote, like you say, Jake. Um so that's it is what it is. We we got stuck. Kind of I mean, kind of screwed us. 31 teams can have them for basically nothing and no one wants them. I can't blame the Jets for that. I, that's 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 a Zach Wilson problem, people. This is not Darnold, who the Jets were able to get a second, a fourth, and a sixth for because he had value. I mean, crazy. Rich says, hit the like button. Rich, thank you, my man. Appreciate that. Uh, Dom C's watching the program. He just wrote in that J.C. Latham in Florham Park to meet with the Jets tonight and tomorrow. How do you feel about Latham, Dom? Uh, Dom I, I know Dom likes Latham. How do you feel about Latham, uh, Frankie? Love Latham, but there's concerns. The two concerns are, does he really want to be a great football player? Does he really want it? I've read some stuff and him not wanting to work out and do certain things make, made some teams question it, and I've read some stuff online. Two, coming from that Alabama system, we've seen a ton of offensive linemen come out of that system and just not be able to translate in the NFL. And I remember one sp- particular player, Chance Warmack who I told myself was a can't-miss guard prospect, and he didn't turn out to be anything. So we've seen Evan Neal's. You know, you, you've seen tackles. So those are the only two concerns. But when Latham puts his paws on you and he, he, he plants his two legs, you are not moving the guy. 
he may have the highest ceiling out of all of these offensive linemen, but he may have a pretty low floor if he doesn't really want it. That's the whole thing with Latham. Super chat from King and Dreams, KND. Zach will get traded for a fifth rounder. I, I mean, hope so, man. I'll kiss Joe Douglas's bald head if they could turn <laughs> Zach Wilson into a fifth. I mean, <laughs> I'd, I'd be shocked. Mike's D's nuts writes in. <laughs> Do we think JD's going to give us anything? And KND is the man. Uh, he might give you a nugget or two we can interpret. Like Douglas will maybe give you something. I'm not expecting him to tell you, hey, here's our big board. This is what we're doing. You know, you're not going to get that on Friday. You might get yeah, something. Yeah, it seems like, you know, that's one thing that's been bothering me about this team over the last couple of years. Tell me if I'm wrong here, Jake. I might be wrong, but I feel like they don't say anything. Robert Sal has been neutered. Zach Wilson was neutered after those comments after the Chicago game. Joe Douglas doesn't say anything. He's kind of naturally like that, so I don't really put that on him. Can they be a little bit more honest with us and be a little bit more emotional at times? It's just like, it's just generic speak all the time now. They don't give us anything. It's win games. That's all I care about. Yeah, end of the day, that's it. And have only Joe speak at this point. No, yeah. I don't need Woody to talk about Zach Wilson, how he's a, he's a, a valuable commodity after he trashed him six weeks prior to that. Like I let from this point on, if it, it, unless it's Sala or Douglas, like th those are the only people that should represent the organization and speak publicly at this point. Agreed. You know, if Woody wants to take his victory lap over the uniforms, you just leave it to Twitter. That's fine. Yeah, I agree with that. Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. Let's take some calls as well. Let's go to Rob, the jet fan from Glenhead, who just got a membership and now he's enjoying a beautiful afternoon. Hello, Rob. It looks nice hey, out guys. there, Rob. What's How up, you guys Rob? Doing? Yeah, just over here, a little local beach of mine happens. It's really, really nice. I figured, like, you know, we had so many rainy days. Finally, I'm getting the weather I love. But I was listening to you, Frank. And what I question is, which I've questioned before, was the Latham. I, I kind of scared of Latham. He's always scared me for the reasons kind of that what you said. He kind of looks like a guy who's got to be motivated. He could be like another Beckton, which would really scare me. Um, also, uh, I would be more confident, Frank, of the Jets taking a guy like Troy Fontano than... Brock Bowers, because I, I, it's kind of like what Jake said. I think Brock Bowers has got to come out running, and he's got to have a year like nearly a thousand yards to really be successful with the Jets. And I, I don't know. I mean, I like Conklin, and I like Rutger. I, I want to at least give him an opportunity. I'm not so sure about Brock Bowers. I, I would have more confidence in a, a Troy Fontano, and then even if we had to pick down and we got like Thomas, like, you know, Brian Thomas Jr., I would have more confidence in that than to go for a Brock Bowers, to be honest with you. So I, I've told this to Jake already. I'm kind of down on Bowers. I really don't believe in him uh, to the Jets, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, you make good points. I mean, that is – you made valid points. There's nothing you could say. I think a lot of times we're trying to always argue our side and think we're always right. That was our valid points. I will say, though – Fatanu becomes a fit piece. Like, if you're thinking BPA strictly, let's just say, which it kind of gets overused, best player available. I don't really always believe in that because are the Texans going to draft a quarterback if it's the best player available? No. Or are they going to draft a left tackle with Laramie Tunsil? No. So it's all dependent on who you have. Brock Bowers, to me, is a better player significantly than Troy Fatanu at their position, and potentially what they can give you in, um, in value-wise on, on a ceiling basis. At their position, I'm saying. Does Fatanu fit more this team and in this window? Yes, definitely. So I, I wouldn't be mad at it, but I would rather take Fatanu later on if you can. And I was speaking with Nick before, and we, he was speaking to some people saying that Fatanu may drop into like the later teens um, if that's the case, we, if you could drop back and guarantee that and then get an, you know, a, a later second, even an earlier third in the 60s, that might be something we may want to you know, look at. I just don't like that he's not a left tackle. 
prototypically speaking. Like he's not someone that you're going to slate for their career as like this like five to seven year left tackle because of the way he moves and the things that he does, which is more predicated on his physicality and his ability to move. So that's my only concern with him. It's interesting because some people say he definitely is a left tackle and you're, like, and you're not sold on it. So it just shows you this this time of year, man. <sighs> Everyone's got different evaluations on players. This is yeah. so much of this is coaching too, right? Which terrifies yes. me when it comes to the Jets because I don't like Keith Carter as the O-line coach. I wish they had Bill Callahan, for example. You know, then you'd feel confident. Oh, well, you know, the Jets draft this player. We know they're going to be coached well. Like that, that's why I'm so confident when it comes to the Jets uh, defensively, like, finding guys and developing them because they have a track record over the last three years doing it. Like they, they don't develop players on offense that we've seen. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's another question. Like how much concern do you have with that? I was going to ask you about Keith Carter today, Jake, like, is that a concern when it comes to developing some of these offensive linemen? I mean, how much of a concern is it? I think there's some guys that you don't need to worry about. I think uh, Fashanu and alt probably don't need to worry about, but Fatanu Fuanga, Latham, you're going to have to develop these guys to, in, to some degree. Latham, maybe in another kind of way. So, but to his Latham point, if you look at Latham on film, just just saying, if you you know plug him in, just YouTube, you know, pass all pass block sets, JC Latham, go game by game. When he engages the edge rusher, it's over. There is no nothing going on. There's no countering by the edge. Right. There's no him falling down. There's no he. Gets his arm and it's over. Good night. That's it. You're deuces. done. I love it. Yeah, deuce. Yeah, exactly. Like, no. And that's what I love about him. But sometimes he doesn't want to do that. Sometimes he'll go down and he'll be like, oh, I'm good. Like, or he'll block for uh, literally a second and a half and just let go and kind of spin around. Like, it's odd reps. Like, just you see stuff, you're like, what, what are you doing, dude? The play's not even close to over. And then the next play, he'll pancake someone. So you're like, what? I don't know. He's a weird prospect, but he's really talented, man. Very talented. Bang! Bang! Ladies and gentlemen, he has done it again. Five more memberships. Wow, let's go. From KND, Sco, Sean Bennett, Sonny Miller, Dead Egg JM, and Andreas Maximus28. Welcome to Asmania. You are now an Asmaniac. Hold on. I, you know, th this is a live look of uh, KND. You know, on on the money phone, you know, <laughs> just making sure everyone has plenty of memberships. Unbelievable. Unreal. Uh, definitely check out the day in the life of Mr. Bonesy video, folks. If you're now a freshly minted as maniac, a lot of fun, surprising bones at the shoe store yesterday. A big fella's got a wager for me. He says, Jake, let's place a wager. If the Jets take any University of Tennessee player, I will donate 20 memberships. If the Jets strap that POS Milton, I get Patreon. For the year, uh, big fella, big Tennessee fan, Frankie, not the biggest fan of UT quarterback Joe Milton does not want Oof. him on the Jets. You got a deal. All right. If the Jets draft Milton, I'll cover your Patreon for the year. to So you at least can, uh, you know, basically emotionally hedge the pain that I guess the Jets drafting Milton will cause you. big fella. <laughs> now, on this topic, uh, Frankie, are there any day three quarterbacks that intrigue you? Because I do think the Jets are going to take someone at some point here in the draft. Jake, sh short answer, no. I don't like any of them. I don't. I don't. I, I almost feel like it's not even worth us drafting one. That's okay. Yeah, I mean. I, I don't. I'd rather take take another offensive lineman, take a running back, take a wide receiver, even take a tight end. I mean, if, so if someone's there late, if you want to develop someone. But there's nobody, man. I looked at Hartman. I looked at Pratt. I looked at uh, Jordan Travis. I like a little bit more. The one guy I like is this Austin Reed character, but it's like a complete what if. I don't. There's no like way for me to project him even making a roster. I like his arm. I like his 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 grit. I love how he moves in the pocket. I like the pop. Um, he knows how to develop out a number one receiver, which I think is somewhat a little bit of an underrated thing when we discuss quarterbacks. Like, are you able to develop? your wide receiver one into being something better. You look at Stafford, what he did with like Calvin Johnson and Cooper cup and now Puka, like there is something to be said about that. So Austin Reed was throwing it to Corley all day, all night. And um, these other guys, man, like the kid out of BYU Slovis. I, I'm not, I, I, I don't see any of them. Milton. I don't know. I, I like Travis uh, Pratt. You could sell me on. Spencer Rattler. I think he's got a lot of talent. I don't think he'll be in range for the jets. He's probably a day two pick. Yeah, definitely. 
So we'll see. Dano says sub of the week project prospect with Dom C. Well, good news for you, Dano. Dom's going to be featured on our mega cast next week. We're going to have him on hopefully each night to kind of break down the prospects and get his thoughts. Cause Dom is as plugged into the drafts as anyone out there. King and dreams with another super chat. He says, if we get Marvin Harrison jr, I'm dropping one K no cap. I'll tell you what, Frankie, <laughs> could you imagine draft night? We're sitting there watching this thing and they, the, either the Cardinals are on the clock or the chargers are on the clock and you're watching ESPN and that jet logo <laughs> pops up on the screen. <laughs> Oh, that's Joe Douglas Don't music. Me with a good time. Would you trade next year's one to get Marvin? Would you do it? No. Sorry, buzzkill. Yep. But no, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I, I, I think Two, I agree. Second, I wouldn't. Second. I personally wouldn't do it, but I wouldn't hate it if they did. You know, in the yeah, moment, I'd I be like, "Eff it, it either." <laughs> Here we go. We're all in. <laughs> we're we're all in. Uh, Peter Castro wants to get your thoughts on Malik Neighbors. Love him, man. Second best wide receiver in this draft. Does everything. Game changer, explosive, highlight reel. Um, I mean, he's he's Odell Beckham, Justin Jefferson. Like, I mean, he's he's everything you'd want out of a receiver. The only thing are some of these off-field things that you're hearing. Sometimes you have to be a little careful. I think they get overplayed with certain guys. Like, I think they've been a little overplayed with Caleb specifically. Well, check the but, source where some of that's coming from, too. Like, definitely. It's not you know, yeah, but you got to worry again, just from a contractual standpoint, like after their contracts are, are up or you need to extend them, are they going to want, you know, they're going to want as much money as they can and they're going to start building more of a brand versus stuff they do with their teammates like X, Y, Z. I mean, that stuff could all eventually come back to kind of bite you in the behind, but you got to worry about that after you draft the kid. That's how good he is. You got to teach him up. These are young guys. You got to turn boys into men sometimes. So that's on the coaching staff. That's on the, the front office, too. They have to figure out how to cultivate an environment to develop these players. They're young kids, man. They're 20, 21 years old. So, but yeah, I love Malik. Awesome Mike player. D's Nuts says, this guy kings, though. Absolute legend on here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Shout out to KAD once again. A couple of Patreon uh, subscribers just signed up within the last day. I want to give them some love. As we're on right now, Jets After Hours is officially a Patreon subscriber. Welcome aboard. Also want to give some love to Walter McIndo, Jacob Munez, Bidon, and Thomas Rossi, our five most recent Patreon subscribers. Thank you guys for the support. Just five bucks a month. You get bonus content like the Mr. Bonesy video. You get the show in audio form. You get your name in the countdown ticker. And you get shows that are never actually on YouTube. They get released only to Patreon. We do a couple of those every single month. And, of course, it helps support me. So I appreciate it. You sign up for the year. You save 15%. Let's get back to your calls right now. We got Phil on the line who wants in. What's up, Phil? What up, Jake? How you doing, man? What's up? Not much. How you doing, Frankie? What's up, man? How you doing? Not much, man. So I, the only thing I would pose uh, that would be worst-case scenario is if, like, we do trade up. And we move past ten, and we get up in the you know closer to the top five. We pick what what is our you know what's our come down at at three? Are we trading the third round pick, or if we do sit where we are, we can't trade down good enough to get a package, and we take a wide receiver there. Like let's say Roma Dunze falls, he's the selection at ten. What do you do at third round? Like that's the only thing I think about. You know what I mean? Like Patrick Paul is gone, which was someone he talked to relatively Joe at a, at the senior bowl or not him, but somebody did. And it, you know what I mean? Like it kind of, it makes me think like, what would they do? But other than that, like Bakhtiari to me, I, I just don't like that, that taste in my mouth of if he gets there and that's their fallback option. It still doesn't, you know, it doesn't sit well with me. So for me, it's like, if it's, if it is old line, if they trade back, it just is the best scenario, no matter what I think. But uh, if they do have to pick in third round, what's available, what do you guys think? That's the million Frankie? dollar question. Yeah. So I like, so it's funny. I love some offensive linemen in the third round or don't love. I really like, because there's no quality really like offensive tackles in the third round. They're like, can't miss. If they were, they'd be a first or second rounder. So some guys I really like, I like Rosengarten a lot. I like, um, Kieran Amagaji that the jets are linked to. I, I like Christian Jones a little bit. 
Um, and I like Blake Fisher. I don't like Patrick Paul at all. I, I don't I don't see it. I'm not a fan. I just really? I look at him on yeah, I look at him on tape. I'm like, he's got a lot of development to do, man. He gets out of his stance really late. He's hunched over, he's fallen, he's clumsy. I mean, like, he's he's a developmental project. But if he can get some of his body right, he could be good. But I I I don't see it. I see him constantly like leaning over. Um and uh, yeah, some of the other guys. Hey, yeah, you're, you're, it's Slim Pickens and the Brandon Coleman. I'm not huge on the Jets are linked to at a TCU. Another guy I'm like iffy on. I do like Frank Crum out of Wyoming as a sixth, seventh rounder, but uh, these guys might never play. I mean, like they might be a you know you, you fall into a situation where you're they're on the practice squad and they may offer you something so but i do think if you can get kieran amagaji blake fisher or in some weird way which is not going to happen but if rosengarten can fall in the third you almost need to snag rosengarten for example if he can get to the third even if even if you may have taken an offensive lineman in the first round like you might need to take another one if the value's there that's like listen as much as i'm a bauer boy and i'm all weapons at 10 Listen, it's it's a value based system. If you can get Joe Alt or Fashano, you draft them and you don't think about it. If Rosengarten's there and then your next best receiver is is Brendan Rice, you take Rosengarten because you need more offensive line help. You're building a team. I don't care how we score. You need to protect Rodgers. That's how you'll score. Or you can need to throw to some quality guys. But you need a a, 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 a tier system. That's the point of a big board. There's yeah. A, you know, yeah. Well, to, to your point too, it's easier in season. God forbid you need another weapon to find a weapon than it would be to find an offensive lineman. Like you see receivers get out all the time. You're not going to be able to find quality offensive linemen at the trade deadline. Like you're going to end up with Roger Saffold again. Like nice job by Joe Douglas with that one. Like I, I'm not even sure he's a real person. So like <laughs> when in doubt, build the line, man, and just trust that Aaron Rodgers will elevate guys. Cause that's what he does. You know, a hundred percent, man, hundred percent. And then even looking like like if you uh, if 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 you want to crack up, I was joking around about this before, but go look at Matt um, Goncalves, Matt Goncalves, who people really like at a pit as like a fifth rounder. The dude's a complete project. He's like stumbling over himself. He's a big big boy. I told Nick if Nick was ever an offensive lineman in the NFL, he would play like Matt Goncalves. But there's no value late with these offensive linemen. So I am on board. If the right guys are there at 10, you, 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 you take the offensive lineman, either Alt or Fashanu. However, Brock Bowers is there. It's going to be tough to pass up on him to then take uh, a, a Fatanu or a Fuanga. It's going to be a very tough pill to swallow from Joe Douglas's perspective and from some fans just because of how different he is. He is different, man. He, he is. is different. <laughs> I love it. I just love the way you worded that. Uh, he is I, like, just, I get it. Not, I, I hate saying it. it. Like, I don't want to be like a, you know, a fanboy of, of a player, but you watch him, man, that yak. Like, how is, how does he stay up all the time? It's like a cat. Doesn't fucking, doesn't hit his, sorry. He doesn't hit his back. What, what do you think of the nickname established for fans of his? I think we could do a little better. Bauer boys. Bauer boys. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Something with power or Bauer or or ba would you prefer to be a Bauer bro? Bauer bro makes probably more sense because I know some Bauer bros and they definitely look like bros. So yeah, probably Bauer bros. That's I don't know. Well, I, we're gonna get there. Ladies hey, and gentlemen, Peter Schrager. He's coming. He's coming here, right? He's he's the guy with all the Jetsons. He mocked them to us. Well, he's gotten a lot right, but last year he got it wrong, so I'm hoping he gets it wrong again because I really don't want Bowers at 10. I'll take him on a trade down. I'll compromise with you, Bower boys. Bower bros. Bower boys. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he has done it again. This show is just off the rails. KND, five wow. more memberships. We're up to 30 from one man this show. He donated 100 yesterday. Scaramina, uh, Raymond T, Jonathan I.D. Drovo, Nicholas Cook, B. Cole. Congratulations. Welcome to Asmania. You are officially 
And as Maniac, King and Dream says, Jake, hold my Henny. Hashtag, it's time. Pound that Henny emoji, baby. That's courtesy of KND's work yesterday. Boom. Love that. Uh, let's see. I was reading a comment here. Oh, yeah, before I get to the comment, we're having a, a membership uh, battle. Mike D's Nuts has just gifted five bang, bang. memberships to the following people. Frankie, have you ever seen anything like this? This is insane. I mean, it's How crazy. many do you have I, right now that have been gifted? What, like 35? We're at 35. We've been on the air for 50 minutes. This is crazy. That's uh, Do the math. Wow. 35 times 5. Fonz, Damn. Your DJ Jibs, Javid G, J Mully. Congratulations, courtesy of, once again, Mike D's Nuts. He's done it. He's made it happen. Congrats to the new. As What's your record for uh, for gifted memberships? I think we got 130 in a show once. I got a Wow. Look. Yeah, it's crazy. That's, oh, that's, my God. We might insane. get it now. Mike D's Nuts is back for more. <laughs> Holy crap. Sound the alarms. It's all happening. <laughs> Mike D's Nuts has gifted Gary Klessler, Mr. Chill 21, Eric Kelly, Yetus, Deletus, William Monahan, Christopher Thibodeau, no relation to Tom, Go Stackley, <laughs> Derek B. Shepard Sr., Uriah Trailer, Neek, Nice Looking Feet. Oh, God. Uh, that's a weird one. Uh, the, those are the 10 <laughs> names. Unbelievable, man. Unreal. Speaking of Tom Thibodeau, how are we feeling about our Knicks? We confident no matter who they play in round one? Listen, man, as long as we got Jalen there, as long as we got number 11, baby, I don't care. I, I, I've never seen anything like this kid, Bye! man. Yeah, I'm so excited, man. I just hope, I just hope that D uh, Dante could be, could continue play, to play like Dante. And then yep. one other person, whether it's OG or someone off the bench, Bogey, could give us that third option scoring. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not afraid of the Heat or the Sixers, by the way. I, um, I and B's not Nick fully healthy. Are. I don't he's think he's going to realize that. I don't think he's going to finish his series either, especially against our bigs. He's going to get beat up. I don't see it. Also, you know how many dunks Embiid has had since he's returned from injury? How many total heard, dunks like, he's had? I heard none. Zero. He has not had, yeah. He's not the same player right now. No, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take the Sixers, honestly. The Heat scare me because of Spolstra. He's that good of a coach. Yeah, yeah. I think the Knicks but will the, win either way, but I, 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 I'd rather play Philly than, than Miami. Yeah. I also don't agree with fans that are like, oh, we should have intentionally lost that last game to get the three seed to like play the Pacers. That's not how you do it. Like, you win, you take your two seed, you have better home court advantage throughout the playoffs, and you get to 50 wins, and you build good energy. Like, there's no reason to intentionally lose. You're a second seed or a third seed if you lost. Like, you should win both of those in both of those scenarios. There's no excuse. Sometimes it's good to get battle-tested early, too. That's unbelievable. Now, I'm just seeing this here from a couple people in the comments. Obviously, I haven't heard it yet because I'm doing the show with you, Frankie. But apparently, the, the Michael K. show was talking about me just now and oh then, wow which is sh shout out to the case show clancy says jake well, you're a big shot dude you're i don't know about big, that i'm trying i'm trying to be like you man you know you're the big shot over here <laughs> <laughs> jake get a decent plug on K show by don masked by some teasing but still a good plug well i love don so i i anything don says well I, well without even having i've heard it i know don's got my back uh oh here we go this is what don said according to the gta Lagreca said you wake up in fifth gear you shower with your microphone <laughs> yeah i do so someone tell the k show i do in fact shower with my microphone you know you never know it when is, you need to go live it is unbelievable we were talking about this before how the heck you are able to do three four shows a day people don't realize it it takes a lot of energy to do one show takes a lot of energy to make i make these stupid videos these five minute <laughs> clips it, you do it over and over again i mean it's tough sometimes you don't feel good you didn't get a good night of sleep you, you're a little off you gotta you move cross go. country in the middle of the off season yeah that <laughs> that that week sucked but no i mean the the, the, way, the reason i'm able to do it and you know this frankie this fan base is incredible like they, they i mean i'm able to talk about one football team year round and make a good living doing it like it's insane you know it really is no, man, it's tough. It's tough. But you're right. This fan base is great. I mean, then there's constantly things to talk about. And, and Always. fans are knowledgeable. Like, these aren't just – they're not casual fans. I mean, you have fans that drop stuff that when you look a year back or two years back, they were right about some things. I'm sure fans are going to be right about a lot of things this draft. 
Uh, um, it's, it's true. Dude, think about it. If if we as Jet fans took a Twitter poll on which player the Jets should take in the draft over the last decade since the playoff drought started, we would have a higher hit rate than Isaac and McCagnin and a, a lot of Douglas's picks too. Let's go. Let's be real here. Like people talk about, oh, you know, uh, Jet fans are dopes. Like what C- Cowherd said. Like no, actually, this is one of the most knowledgeable, passionate fan bases in sports, man. Yeah, I remember last year, Jeff fans wanted Christian Gonzalez. Uh, other fans wanted Dalton Kincaid. I was one of those fans. I mean, like, we know what we're talking about, man. We, we look at the same film everybody else does. And that's what the coolest thing about the internet and media, that's the coolest thing about the internet and media today. You can get access to the same kind of stuff that these scouts and, 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 and front offices have access to. So you get some fans out there that know a lot of stuff, man. It's crazy. It's tough yeah. to decipher, though. A lot of fans that... Just BS too. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. But and you know it's not BS. Control. The salty teacher, Frankie. Five Ooh. more channel memberships. This is for all the Jet fans. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I wish the salty teacher was my actual teacher growing up. Hamal Patel, Dark Knight, Zoe, Jerry Moore, B. Saez, and Matt Siegel, the architect of the L five tailgate, have all received. As Ooh. maniac memberships. How about that? That's Frank, awesome. you coming to L5 this year to watch uh, some jerseys be burnt? You know what? I might have to, man. I might have to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the first tailgate I used to go to was called L7. That was how I got introduced into the uh, Jets Twitter community. There was a big L7 group with a bunch of people on Twitter. It was Drew from Jersey, Brian, Joanna. There was like a, It was just a cool group, and... Everyone kind of went their own ways, and that was in, like, 2010. Kind of interesting how things play out. Well, maybe Two you guys got to get back together. Time. The Jets haven't been good since that year. I know. I know. <laughs> we, when we stopped going, it's, it was ironically or coincidentally, it was when the team started sucking, and it was like everyone just like, oh, we're done. Like, we sucked in 12, and we're not going to come ever, back ever again. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, Rick Kent. I mean, Rick, you're too kind, man. Unbelievable. Bang! <laughs> the following five listeners just became as maniacs 55 channel members and counting jk adam janice aaron quinonis swanel g patel and luke spoletto congratulations thank rick thank everyone who's gifted you your membership it's the least you can do pay it forward we got the best listeners on the show and we will get back to your calls now this guy used his free super chat of the month to write in jeremy ruckard six five 250 pounds can we see what rogers could do with him in conklin what's Kuntz's development look like with another year with Aaron Rodgers. So rather than address his comment head on, let's bring Devin on right now who wrote the comment. He's next up on the show. What's up, Devin? Uh-oh, unmute your mic, Devin. There I go. I wasn't expecting to come on this quick. I was going to chill. Dude, this is my <laughs> point. Like, good God, do we forget? Here's my other thing. Before I forget, there's a lot of my brain right now. Jake, dude, man, he stinks. Changed my life. Because this Jets community is the best, bro. Because that was the rant that changed everything for me. But that being said, um, how the hell are we forgetting about 6'5 Jeremy Rucker? Like, this dude just demolishes, dude. Plus, where the hell is he from? Jersey, right? Who's his team? The Jets. Who he's going to go hard for? Who he's going to play, give his all for? Like, I want to see him unlock with AR. You know what I mean? Like, why are we not thinking about him? Like, Conklin still doing his thing with, like, garbage quarterback play this is ridiculous to me like i'm not saying black blouse is not going to be good he probably will be but i want an offensive lineman if we could trade down i want i would even take you know uh of course i would love a dunze i want i think him and garrett will just be fucking weapons galore let me close my door because my daughter isn't here <laughs> <laughs> see i want to hear her um the passion that's going to come out but dude like how do we not forget about this understand like what the pain has been man i've been a jet fan since 95 it's painful man and watching the team go down time after time after time again offensive line offensive line like this shit is ridiculous you know i feel like if we have but this is the crazy thing though i really feel like if we have an offensive lineman we pick an offensive lineman we're not all, everybody's gonna the starting five is gonna play the whole year because we have a good backup but if I we know, don't right? <laughs> that's it <laughs> shit is gonna fall apart you know <laughs> But I, I still would love to have a Dunze. But you know what? If we could get Brian Thomas, we have the fact that the A-Rod effect, you know, when you said you were sitting down with C.J. Mosley, and I listened to that, 
And that stuck in my craw, bro. When you said he was cooking the D, he was cooking our defense, our top five D with the bum squad. Yep. The bum squad, Koontz. You see what he looked like? <laughs> lit up. You know what I'm saying? Like, A-Rod can do some things. Like, we got to factor these things in when we're thinking about these things. Like, you know, I'm not saying, again, I'm not, I don't hate Bowers. I don't hate the kid, but I just think we have better, greater necessities. And Jake, dude, Man, you are blowing up. Is there any advertisements you don't you don't have? I'm <laughs> glad that you onto the liquid IV, bro, because I cringe liquid IV every day, and I throw us up into this oh, thing right here, man. My man, People, he's yo, sponsored bro. by liquid IV too. Look at this guy. Oh my gosh, this dude. Who is he not sponsored by, bro? <laughs> Chipotle. He's the bro. man. Bro. Chipotle. <laughs> That's Where Chipotle. Are they at? How they not on board? Oh, I know. That... What the fuck is wrong with Chipotle? Like That's all we easy, do is talk Jay. about Chipotle all the damn time. Like I, why I, I don't get on? it. I don't get it. <laughs> David, you're the man. I appreciate you. Small correction because I know my uh, Long Island you know, fans are going to kill me if I don't. Jeremy Rucker, not New Jersey, the pride of Lindenhurst, Long Island, Devin. But you're good. I it, it, Same point applies. He's the local kid. And, yeah, Rucker's a third-round pick. I'm not saying you don't take Bowers because you, 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 you have Rucker, but if you take Bowers, Frankie, you're burning a third-round pick because you never got to see what Jeremy Rucker is as a player. We don't know what he is. I think he could be good. Yeah, the only – I guess I don't know if silver lining is the right way to describe, but the only silver lining I would look at with that is Conklin, I believe, is an unrestricted free agent next year. You could keep Rucker around for another year as your tight end, too. With... Yeah, but then he's on the last year of his deal. So it's like uh, you could extend I know, it's him. It's kind of like a yeah. lame duck tight end year, if that makes sense. Yeah, I know. I mean, listen, I don't know. I've, I've seen flashes from Rucker that I really like. And then I've said to myself, well, I don't see anything that's going to give me confidence that he's going to be able to stick around here for on a, you know, an elongated amount of time. Like I just, I haven't seen it yet. So yeah. I mean, listen, the thing with Bowers again, it's, it's how much is Joe D going to value BPA and how much is he going to value these offensive linemen that are going to be at the top of this draft? Because I'll say this, there's going to be some moves in the top 10, Jake, I think are going to be a little crazy. Like, we're going to have things going on that we didn't expect. I'll give you some names. Like, Terrion Arnold could end up going in the top 10. I love that player. J.C. Latham, we spoke about, could be going in the top 10, could be the first offensive tackle taken. Don't be surprised if another receiver goes in the top 10 outside of the top three. I mean, I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's crazy to think, but... These players in this draft, there's like 20 players that have such high ceilings that if a team doesn't feel like their floor is that low, they'll be willing to risk it and take these players because they look at a higher floor than maybe we look at when we see a Brian Thomas. We can't argue that he doesn't have a tremendously high ceiling. We just think he has a pretty low floor because of where he played and his him, you know, he doesn't run all the routes and he's a little inconsistent in, in, in the route tree. Some teams might be like, we can fix that easily. Just come yep. here. We have wide receivers coach. No problem. So then he becomes into the uh, wide receiver three category for maybe some teams. We don't know. So it's going to be interesting. I can't wait for it to come because I – I am I, I'm I'm just overloaded. Like today, I was trying to figure out my thoughts on. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore. <laughs> like I, I I literally don't know. Like is this guy good or not? Like it's like you know, it's like what <laughs> I don't I like forgot like what I was thinking today. I'm like, damn. I just wish we could sim to next Thursday already. Oh, just got us in the draft this Thursday. Honestly, it's a little a week too late. Me too. Before the NBA and the NHL playoffs start, you're not going to be stressed. Probably draft night. Oh, my luck. It'll be a Nick and Islander playoff night. I'm going to be somehow trying to do a show and keep up with that. It's going to be wild. Yeah. Yeah. What happened with the Islanders, by the way? I I'm they're always in. a person to not discuss hockey on, on our stuff. And it's funny. I'm just bringing it up. They're in. Like they're, they're what? The they're, eighth seed or something? Uh, they finish as the third in the Metro. So they're going to play Carolina, the, the team that finished second in the Metro. And their comeback was insane, right? Like a few months ago, they were completely out of it or something. They were dead. Was... Yeah, I, they had like a 6% chance to make the playoffs a month ago. Really? Yeah. Oh, good, good good, for them. Shout Always out to Patrick Wah. Let's go. Free stuff. That's right. Free stuff. More memberships. TH3 Entertainment says, I want in Joe D, Matt Matheson, Noah Nando, Jay Savage, Sergi Mikolov. Congratulations. You are all as maniacs let's get back to the calls right now then we'll let frankie run appreciate your time frankie ladies and gentlemen jo joining us right now is the great charles gorman hello charles hello frankie v hello jake how are you what's up charles 
I feel good today. I just had dinner. I had uh, ziti today for dinner. Oh. It's always a good move, my man. Always. Now, was was it home-cooked ziti, or did you order it in Yeah, we, my mom cooked it. She cooked it for Easter a while ago. She left some. She froze it, then she reheated it up, and it was good. Nice. So how does the ziti uh, compare to the chicken soup? <laughs> <laughs> It, it that, was good. It's good. You can't it's compare good. ziti to chicken soup, Jake. Come on. Now the big fella <laughs> wants the ziti recipe. Well, well we, we do. We also, want it. <laughs> make either you know your penne ziti. Uh, get either like beef or you know you take mozzarella, take regatta, a lot of regatta, a lot of ziti, and um. You can even add some meat, whether it be, you know, meatball meat or sausage meat. Doesn't matter. What else did you have that. with the uh, with the ziti, Charles? Any, what, yeah, what, Tomato what sauce, extra sauce, you know, that's it, you know. Did you have any salad beforehand? King Lossy says, I'm always eating. I need some of that <laughs> damn ziti. First he says he needs some of that damn chicken soup. Now he needs get some of that damn ziti. Look, Lowski, uh, I, I love your passion. I love your enthusiasm. Uh, I appreciate it, my brother, my fellow Jet fan, my fellow Asmaniac. Um, but the thing is, I'm not just going to give out my mother's random food to people that I don't know that much in person. It's not Damn. me being disrespectful or racist or anything. It's just that, you know, my mother is very strict about giving out address to people that I don't really know that much. She doesn't so, want, you know. So Charles, wh why don't you send the recipe? You don't need to send anything, but you can email the recipe. Fine, I'll email it to you when my mother gives it to me. I don't know. Uh, to be brutally honest with you, when I send you the fake-ass recipe the other day, I was just joking with you. So I remember trying to think of something that similar what Gator would do, and I was just having fun with it. So, so he's yeah. sending out fake recipes here. Is that well, what I'm hearing? His recipe I'm not saying I'd send like out recipes. I'm just make one up so that people could stop talking about it. Well, I, we're not going to stop until we get this recipe, Charles. <laughs> well, I'll ask my mother. But right. I will tell you this. My late, my maternal grandmother, my mother's mother. Uh, bring her, my, bring her on the show. Her chicken soup was even better. Really? That's what my mother told me. She said, Charles, honey, you, your <laughs> chicken, my chicken soup is nothing compared to your grandmother, my mother, my grandma, Doogie, uh, my grandmother, Antonina. She's Italian, your grandmother, huh? Both my grandmothers are Italian. My my deceased grandmother and my only grand my grandmother that's still alive, my father's mother. They're both one hundred percent Italian. Yeah, Antonina. I, that's a, that's Italian name, man. Charles, are you more Italian than me, man? <laughs> oh come on, no! Is this a measuring contest now? I mean, come on, bro. I mean, um, I'm seven eighth Italian, one eighth Irish. Ah, my father's three quarters Italian, one quarter Irish. My grandfather was 50-50. My mother is 100% Italian. Um, most, most of my family that I know of, that I've met, that I've known throughout my life, uh, they are uh, Italian. So, um, Is it true your favorite uh, baseball player is Anthony Volpe? No, it's Derek Jeter. You know he's retired now. Yeah, but Derek's not Italian. Doesn't matter. <laughs> what do you mean it doesn't matter? Doesn't have to be Italian. I don't know, Charles. <laughs> you seem like a guy who I like what we eat the hell out of the ball yesterday. Yeah. He's having a great year. Yep. Offensively. Um and defensively too. Having a good year. Oh, he's very good defensively. Last year he had twenty home runs, twenty bases, but his batting average was two oh one. But this year he's over three hundred. Charles, I heard that your Do grandpa's I love Joey favorite... Gallo? Joey Gallo couldn't play for shit in New York. Charles, stop, stop reading the chat, Charles. You're on my show. <laughs> I'm asking you the questions, not the chat. I have a Sorry, question. I have ACD, OCD. I got a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> Charles, ACD. is it true your grandfather's favorite player was Joe DiMaggio? No, it was Lou Gehrig, the Iron Horse. Really? He actually met Lou Gehrig in person. Said he was a very nice man. I'm assuming this is before ALS. Yes, this was before his ALS disease, yes. Yep. Well, Charles, I have no further questions. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> God damn it. 
Uh, he, wanted to, he didn't want to ask us a question. He just wanted to talk to us. Sometimes that's cool, though. Yeah. He's, I mean, trying to, he's, he's hanging out. He yeah. starts reading the chat, and then you can see his, like, <laughs> like his head is spinning, and I'm just like, Charles, come on here. Uh, I, I think we got more channel memberships here. Hold on. Let me, we got to do some bookkeeping. How do the channel memberships work, by the way? That's your Patreon. They could buy them on YouTube, and then they last for a month. Like, How does that kind of work? I was no, really it's, curious. It's all through YouTube. Patreon's a separate entity. Um, but then we have a guy like Peter Castro here who gifted 10 memberships, but he just sent a $50 super chat. So now I'm going to have to go and manually buy 10 memberships. Ah. Which and what does memberships work? get you on YouTube versus Patreon? How does what's like? Is it like more perks, like different stuff? Yeah, emojis. You get the name badge next to your name. Priority response in the comment section. Um, shows released early, stuff like that. Oh, okay, cool, cool. No, I didn't know uh, if it was your Patreon like link to it. I was just curious because I know it's also a comment too. Someone asked that. I was curious myself too. Peter, I will buy 10 memberships in a second. Let's get caught up here. King and Dreams. Oh, my God. Another five for King and Dreams. Holy hell. This Folks. dude is balling out. Orb, Hector NYC, Daniel Stern, Roy Kamuladin, Matt Lefamina, all received as Maniac memberships. Congratulations. More free stuff. Free stuff. All right, I got to buy 10 memberships in honor of Peter. We'll do that in a moment. But first, Arizona Jet says, why would we draft Bowers when we have Kenny <laughs> Yaboa? I mean, I think we're going a little too far when we bring up Yaboa. But I I think Rutgers... I will not respond to this yep, question, it's, Jake. Uh, TX writes in, <laughs> over under four and a half current starting offensive linemen to start week one. What does that mean? Yeah, we'll have five. Maybe meant like week eleven, maybe. Uh, or is TX saying like, oh, like one of them is going to be hurt before week one, like the starting five right now? Like, would you go over under? That's a. Good, I mean, listen, that's actually a good question. I'm I'm thinking about it. I've been thinking about it every day. I mean, is that the question the though? Is that what he's asking? I don't know. I think he's saying like by the end of the season, how many of the starting five that we have slated right now will be there at the end of the season? Like projected, let's say if we were to play like a wild card. I think I don't know. It seems like that might be the question. Uh, I would. I don't know. I'll be optimistic. I go. I'm. I'm gonna go under. I think yeah. one of them won't, won't be starting week seventeen. You know, like. <laughs> well, week week one, week seventeen. I'm with you, but week one, like, can they get their five on the field for week one at least? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, week one we should be good. Uh, well, listen, the, the, the thing I do like, though, with the Tyron Smith deal is it's heavily incentivized. So he has to play. He, so I was saying this yesterday on a space we were running. He may not overextend himself throughout the year and even throughout the course of a game to put himself in jeopardy to not finish the season. The more he plays, the more he gets paid. So maybe we won't get, like, the all-pro Tyron Smith but I think we'll get someone that might be healthier than we think. I'm not saying he's going to play 17 because he hasn't done it in five years. But listen, if he could play 13, 14 games and save himself for the playoffs and we you know, swing out Morgan Moses for a game or two at left and have you know, Carter playing at right, it's not an ideal situation, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, teams have gone through stuff like this. I mean, Joe Thune missed the AFC Championship game in the Super Bowl. I know it's the Chiefs and Mahomes, but... With a good quarterback, you can hide a few things on the offensive line, I think. so. Well said. We're just not used to having good quarterbacks. That's why people can't fathom it, you know? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I don't blame them. TH3, not to get off topic, but how about that Holloway KO? That's one of the craziest things I've ever seen in a live sporting event. That was awesome at UFC 300. Yeah, it was. I have a question about that. Uh, stupid question. When he got knocked out, does he have the opportunity, the guy, to get up? Like, how do they classify it as, like, a total knockout where, like, the fight is over? Like, how does that work with points and stuff? I'm just that's, curious. That's the, that's the referee's discretion to call the fight and roll it. Oh, okay. Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And, and the round was over anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. But, like, once the ref stops it, like, that's, that's it. Okay. I figured uh, it was that. But. Um, let's see. Shout out to Alfonso, who says we need to support. Hit the like button. It's free. If you want a channel membership, you can't get one unless you like every video. Like, that's how the algorithm works. So if you want to be gifted a membership for doing nothing other than just watching the show, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'm less than 50 away from 37,000 because of how great this fan base is. DNY for life, who just called our show. That's Devin, who called in earlier. Devin is gifted a membership. 
And it went to the following listener. It went to Mark Grossman. So, Mark, courtesy of Devin, you are now officially an as maniac. All right. Uh, you got time for a couple more, more calls here, Frankie. But if you don't, all good because you've been on for no, a I'm while. I'm good. I'm good. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Midnight. Hey, how you doing, Frankie? Never met Bobby. you before. Are you from I New met, York originally? I, I, I met you before. Oh, you, yeah, you, you told me you were from, I think, Mamaronic, your family. Was that it? Or Westchester? Oh, Glen Oaks. Glen Oaks. Glen Oaks. No. Yes, Glen Oaks, Mamaronic. Yeah. yeah, I remember you, man. <laughs> okay. No. Jake, you know what happened at Wrestling uh, World last night? This guy in no. the first, first row had a Jets jersey with a white uh, jersey, 99, and green collar. Yes, nose number. That was pretty interesting. I hey, tell you that this morning because they were in Canada last night. That's what I tell you. So, Jet fans so, are everywhere, yeah. Bobby. I know. Hey, I liked when this morning the guy says, "How you, I never saw Bobby get mad before." And then Mister Bondi says, "Oh, you got to talk to him about Don Manningly." Yeah, I you called Don Manningly an a hole. He is. <laughs> I don't like the guy. I think I he was just did. having a bad day, Bobby. I I, I think oh, Don Manley's not. I don't not... want to hear that. You got to give kids their autographs. I don't want to hear it. He well, makes well, a lot of money. He should just give the kid a autograph. I agree, uh, but I agree. people make mistakes. Donnie's known to be a nice guy, I've been told. No, well. Yeah, All right. remember Ray Nettles? My father met him. He was a real knucklehead, too. Mm. Ray Nettles, a third baseman. So the Jets are going to be 11 and 6 this year. That's my prediction. What are they doing? 11 and 6 <laughs> this year. Oh, they're going 11 and 6. Okay. That's my prediction. And Bobby? I want Joe Alt for the Jets. What What if Joe Alt's not there? Because I don't think he's going to make it to 10. All right. Let's, uh, well, <laughs> you want that receiver kid, right? Knobel? Oh, yeah, Kodobo. Yeah, oh, the other guy. What's the other guy? Um, oh, can we put a Mr. Bonesy? Is he waiting? Oh, we'll give you Mr. Bonesy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, Mr. Bonesy. Bobby. My yeah. God. What's I up? Saw in the chat. I saw you in the chat. He says, Murph me and Jake Willow. Oh, I, for, I forgot you could see that, too. I feel like I, I thought I was texting Jake on the side. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I saw it. You no, know, I liked the video. That was funny. Aiden put me on the phone. That was hilarious, wasn't it? Uh, no, Mr. Bonesy, the reason why I asked you what, uh, if you were a chef, on uh, Hell's Kitchen, there was a guy named Rosie that looks like you a little bit. He was that, a, That's my cousin, Bobby. That's my cousin. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, no. Well, you look exactly like him. That's why I... <laughs> He's from the Jersey area. I, Bobby, I may not be related to him, but I could get down in the kitchen, you know? Yeah, no, he was a good cook. He made it to the <laughs> end, very ending, the beautiful girl when I took the beautiful girl over there. Can I just say one thing while we got all of us on the line here? Yeah. Uh, whoever this uh, K&D guy is who's, who's dropping the wallet, I would love – on my bucket list, if you could take me and Bobby to the strip club, because if you are showering, <laughs> oh. if you're showering us fans with all these this this dough, imagine chilling with K and D and Bobby at the strip club. I mean, that is on the top of my. Hey, bucket I used to go to them a long time ago. To <laughs> to the one was called the Fuzzy Grape. It was called the Fuzzy Grape. <laughs> They used to take showers there all the time. Oh, oh. man. He's a family well, show, Bob. Hey, you're the one who bought him strip club. I didn't say anything. Yeah, I know. I'm just throwing under the bus. Let's go get a discount. Uh, <laughs> uh, fuzzy gray. Hey, you're the one who bought that up. Oh, <laughs> Bobby, you're a legend. Unbelievable. What a call. I'm That's glad we hilarious. got I'm glad we got that moment. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, all I'll say jet related is that call from Devin. I, I kind of agree, man. As as nice as Bowers could be with, you know, moving around, moving to the slot. I just feel like with the way Aaron Rodgers plays the game, 
what what it's not like it's a weakness you know we're not addressing a weakness and if you had to bet all the money in your bank account one of these offensive linemen is going to get hurt and we're going to need some protection and it would it would be nice to get an offensive lineman who could start you know start the season off not having to be have kind of like Tittman did Tittman came in and he played nice he didn't have to play you know right right away so he learned how to play guard he learned how to play center like i would love that for a young guy too and Rodgers has had bums at tight end that I've been drafting in fantasy for years. Andrew Corliss, mm-hmm. Bobby Tunyon. His best, best tight end was Jermichael Finley, who did absolutely nothing, and he left Rodgers. So, you know, between Rucker, uh, you know, Conklin, and even Kuntz with the developmental aspect of it, Rodgers has given whoever it is, even Bowers, he's given him 807 touchdowns. So I, I, I really – I trust the board, though. Frankie, what do you My question you for you guys is this. No, man, listen, good points, man. Like, I, there's nothing – there's just good points. They're, they're tangibly, like, good points, what you're saying. The thing I will say, though, is not to be, like, a buzzkill with, with our, our receiving situation. I'm not in love with this Mike Williams, Alan Lazard, Xavier Gibson thing. I'm just not. I, you know, Mike Williams is 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 a streak receiver down the sideline. Doesn't do anything across the middle, really. Lazard's even worse than than Mike Williams is, and he does the same kind of thing. Who's playing across the middle of the field? Who's getting us yak? I don't want to overuse Garrett, so I think what they're going to do is play Garrett out of the slot a bunch, get him across the middle, target the hell out of him, kind of like what the Cowboys do with Ceedee Lamb, and that's fine. I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not mad about that, but. I want Garrett to play on the outside. I don't want him going across the middle too much. I'm scared of him maybe get, missing a few games. So if we could get someone across the middle to kind of move the chains without Aaron having to do too much, that I think makes life a little easier on everybody. But I see where – listen, you're not wrong with what you're saying. If you got, if you could keep him upright, he'll find someone open. It could be, it could be yeah. like, oh, us three out there, and I'll figure it out. You know, like yeah. so uh, – yeah. no, I get it. Like, I get that, but – I still think we need to do something because I was reading something the other day and someone's like, you know, Tyron Smith was a bad decision by the Jets because it gives them the illusion that they have a solution at left tackle. Well, I can also say it on the other side. Mike Williams was a bad decision by the Jets because it gives us the illusion that, like, we have a second weapon on this team. Um, so if Mike uh, Williams is healthy, I mean, he's he's more like a 70-30 receiver in terms of when you're – doing those jump balls and, and Aaron Rodgers does like that. And, Aaron, and and Mike Williams doesn't drop the ball. He, he has very good hands. He does. And, and I'm with you though. I do agree that, I mean, again, Lazard being at three with Rodgers, we're going to actually see some production from him. That's going to remind us of all the film we watched on him. I mean, Lazard yeah. has always had stone hands, but he, he was still giving you like 650 and six as the third guy. With Packers, which we would take with how bad he was last year. But I just think in the top, getting that offensive lineman that could fill in and then still be part of the future, you know, years forward, and then still get a receiver. Like, I don't want to not get a receiver. You know, I think Joe Douglas is still going to draft a receiver. I just, if, you know, if we don't have the ammunition, it could be in the third round. It's a pretty deep class. He might trade up into the second round if his guy is still on the board. So, um, but if, if, if neighbors was there, it's like, yeah, we, we have options at 10. I just don't want to tie them because of how heavy the bus, the, the bus rate is in the first round. Like it, it just scares me. It, it scares me. And I think Conklin is not a weakness and Rutgers is not a weakness. Whereas like you said, we could use a nice extra slot, but don't forget, there's still some guys out there in free agency that people are probably going to sign after the draft. Tyler Boyd is still there. Who would be a fan? I wanted him from guy. day one. I thought right? he'd be great here. Yeah, definitely. Nobody he wants was, to I think, hear 11th it, in the league last year in slot yards. So he, he plays out of the slot, veteran receiver. Like, he'd be good here. Now, Coach. Bonesy, you asked for it. You shall receive. KND Ooh. has called in. <laughs> My man. Look at this guy. What's this guy going on? Today. What's going on, man? Man, salute my man Jake. Frankie V is in the building. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> salute my guy Jake. Frankie V is in the building. What's going on? What's going on? Mr. Bonesy. Man. What's up, man? What's good? 
Yo, man, uh, listen, man, I, I, I'm moving to holler at you. I got to get some wingtips, dog. <laughs> hey, man, yo, check me out, aldenmadison.com. Jake's been letting me get the free plugs. I uh, I got you, man. Just hit me up. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, man. Hit me up on IG, man, and, um, you know, we'll talk, all, you know, offline, man. I had a conversation with uh, with Jake early. I'm not going to uh, relate a whole conversation, but Jake is a real one, man, real talk, man. Um, so, so Frankie V, you know, you know, you being, uh, the guest host today, I have a question for you. Um, okay. So, um, what do you think about, um, us getting a running back and a quarterback in the fourth round? Running back. I'm a hundred percent down with Braylon okay. Allen, Marshawn Lloyd, Ray Davis. I love all three of those guys. Yeah. There's another one there too, that you can look at too. I'm not with the quarterback, man. I hate this quarterback class outside of the top three guys. I don't like anybody. I kind of yeah. like Penix a little bit, and there's some things I like about Bo Nix. But after those five or six, if you want to put McCarthy with May. Yeah, it's a little Daniels bit shaky after that, right? I don't see anything, man. I, right. I, I could be wrong, definitely. What the hell do I really know? But looking at these yeah. guys, it's like they're so system-based. They don't go through reads. They don't. They don't do anything. These guys late. Right. None of them that I've seen. I haven't seen anything. So, yo, fellas, I'm about to get out of here because I'm about to catch a train. Yes. Peace. All love. Yo, 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 Bonesy. Yo, Bonesy, hit me up, bro. Real talk. Hit me up. Hit me up. Give my information. Yo, I, I don't have, I'm old school, so I actually don't have Instagram. But uh, we'll oh, definitely um, um, hey, 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 Discord, hey so. Jake, you, could, hey, Jake, you could give him my contact info, man. I'll connect you guys. You got it. Yeah, all yeah, right, yeah. I, 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 my G, I, man. Salute, man. Mister Bones. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So sorry, uh, Frankie V. You, you was talking about um not getting a quarterback. So uh, and besides, like, a, and we don't need to take a quarterback too. I don't think. I mean, we have Tyrod as the backup. We're in this like two year, three ish, maybe year window with Rodgers. Tyrod's here backing him up. Yeah, yeah, there's that. There's no one I I would want to develop out and even bring in. If you want to bring in somebody late, late, but I wouldn't waste fourth round capital in this year's draft on a quarterback when you could get maybe a tight end that slips late, or you can get maybe a receiver or another guard potentially or a center. I just think there's no quarterback here that I would waste a fourth round pick on. I might maybe try something in in you know the sixth or seventh round. Um, yeah, and, and and I'm okay with that, right? Because you know, essentially, what I'm getting from what you're saying, like, let's not break the bank for a quarterback. We have Aaron Rodgers for about two or three years. Tyrod Taylor is serviceable, right? You know, and, and I agree with that. You know, it's just that with the Jets, <laughs> God forbid, <laughs> if knock on wood, both of them go down, like, what are we gonna do? You know, <laughs> they're gonna call. Jake and it's the and Jets. I heard Jake's got a nice arm. They might. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, I definitely, happens, man, hey, hey, like, hey, man, yeah. hey, man. If Jake, if, if Jake quarterbacking, man, you man, put put me on the line. I'm definitely gonna protect him. <laughs> My man, I appreciate you, KND. You're the best, dude. I'll connect you with uh with Bonesy. That'll be great. Knobs and Nightmare says every pick should be an O lineman. I think there's a lot of Jet fans that wouldn't hate that. Uh, how about this from Dark Knight Steve? He says for the shirt fun, F cancer. This is in reference to our, uh, you know, Keith. One of our uh, listeners is going through a battle with chemo right now. We're going to be sending oh. him a jersey, so that's awesome. Ka-ching to you, Dark Knight Steve. Incredible. So many people have reached out, so that jersey is more than covered. We're going to do something nice for Keith. Keith, if you're watching, respond to my email, man. I got to get your address. I got to get the details of what you want on the jersey, but we're working through that And if you right want to link up Keith with us, maybe we could do something at U Stadium. If we, uh, we've done some fundraisers before, maybe we could put something together. So I love that. There. Yeah. All right, so earlier Peter couldn't figure out how to get the memberships, but he did give a a 10 membership super chat. So I purchased the 10 memberships in Peter's name here. For those who don't know how to get memberships, don't do it via super chat. It's not the way to do it because YouTube takes way too much money that way. It does not help the process. I'm actually like paying to then get memberships more than YouTube deserves. So for Peter, we'll make the exception because he's one of our longtime fans. But you got to make sure you hit the gift membership button. That's the way to actually get the membership. It's separate than Super Chats. But this is for Peter. The following people. T-Town, FVMPE, Shane Tuttle, Pocono Jet, Danny Marshall, Mike Cravens, Stewie Lowy, Dimitri Apollakos, KY, Christina Medina, 
Brooke Ogley, Oregon Jets, you have all received your memberships. Actually, Oregon Jets received the membership from Go Stackley, who wrote this. Jake loved the show. I challenge anyone who's gifted a membership to pay it forward. I've done that both times now. That's awesome. Yeah, pay it forward, man. If you get gifted a membership and you're able to gift one back, very kind. Thank you so much. Go stack. What do you have, Jake? 80, 85, 90 memberships today? 77 what? in this show. Crazy. Oof, nice, nice. Crazy. Shout out to everyone, man. Very kind. I got time for one more call. This guy's been on hold. The great Greg is on the line. What's up, Greg? Fellas, how you doing? What's up, man? All right. What's up, Greg? Listen. Uh, <laughs> yo, K, K and D is, is like a tsunami with the gifted, man. And, I mean, forget about letting it rain. He's a tsunami. No <laughs> joke. I like that. I never heard that before. <laughs> yeah, he's a tsunami. But um, <laughs> uh, the, the point on um, what you said, Frankie, about uh, the quarterback in the fourth round, this, this is not the draft to do it because you, you have too many deep positions in this draft to, be, 100%. to, double, to even triple up on some awesome cats if you, if you need to, just, just for either for depth or for some competition. Yeah, and there's not somebody, like, there's not a quarterback, maybe Jordan Travis, but there's, if there was a quarterback that had, like, significant, you know, injury issues that now they have, like, complete, you know, they're completely cleared and they were supposed to be a first rounder, maybe you want to risk something like that. I mean, Travis maybe is the only one, but I saw some Jordan Travis tape. I'm, nothing's that impressive. That's so did I. It was so, wasn't impressive to me. Yeah, it was, it was okay. Do it with Mr. Irrelevant, then. You know, you got to find honestly, this year's Brock Purdy. I honestly would do it. It's like a good luck thing now. Maybe it'll work out again. Who knows? And, and with, and with um, trading down, you know me, Jake, trading down is my my thing. I mean, this is the draft to do it. I mean, for economic purposes, because you, you don't want to boggle. Because basically, if, if all of those cats hit, then you, then you, you have those guys for, like, Five years if he's a first rounder, then four four years you have that control. Plus, if if he hits, then you have the franchise tag. Hopefully, you only have to use one instead of everybody's hitting all at the same time. And you have like, okay, what are we gonna do? We want to keep this guy, want to keep this guy, but we got to let him go because we can't franchise but one player, and then we have to sign this player, and then we have to let this guy go. That's a good problem to have, though. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it, it's true. I mean, look, I, I would like the Jets to have more good problems, like having too many good players than, you know, where we've been the last 13 years in County during this playoff trial. It's, it's been brutal. And I, I've been a Jet fan since 81. It's been brutal. The Sabres just didn't they just fire their coach or something? Wasn't that something yeah. that just happened? And they're so we're tied with them now for the longest streak of like, not making the playoffs. Oh, wow. 13 Unreal. years and counting. We're gonna great, break great it this year, though. We're gonna break it. This is our year. We're gonna make the playoffs. And and Jake, also, I have a minimum. My minimum is they better make the playoffs. If you don't want to see me, you might end up unfollowing me if they don't make the playoffs. And there's no excuses. I don't care who the quarterback is. I don't care what happens with the old line. Jake, we have to at least make the playoffs this year. That's it. The division's getting a little worse, too. You see what's going on with, with Buffalo, you see what's happening to Miami. I'm not afraid of New England right now. We got to make the playoffs this year. I'm not yeah, going to stand for anything else. No excuses this year from me. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, I, to me, the expectation is win the division in the regular season. Like that should yeah. be the regular season goal, and go from there. Obviously, you make the playoffs and go on a run. That's different. But like this division, you said it best, man. The Jets, by not doing anything other than just bringing Rodgers back, are an improved team. Now you look at their off season, and in comparison. Miami lost good players. Buffalo's lost good players. It's vulnerable. It's right there for the Jets to take it. And no excuse if they can't at least be a playoff team. I mean, they don't make the playoffs. They should clean house. It's unacceptable. I agree. I agree. The other question I'm going to ask you, and then uh, I don't know if you wanted me to run, but the last question I'm going to ask you is this. I think. Do you would you give Robert Sala? I know we differ on the Sala thing a bit. 
Um, you don't think, think he's still getting fired, by the way, before the season starts? I guess I guess that ship no, is still. I, th- I think I was wrong about that. Jake. <laughs> I think you were. I actually owe you a drink. Uh, drink and a burger. Burger and a beer. I owe you. By the way, oh, that's don't... right. That was the bet. I remember. You're right. I remember. You're right. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> I, if you had said nothing, I would have completely uh, forgot. Sometimes I talk too much. My mother always told me that. But uh, <laughs> um, I'll say this: I'm going to give him eight games, Jake. I'm going to give him eight games to at least prove to me that they can be at least somewhere around 500. If they end up going 2 and 6 or 3 and 5, they got to consider an in-season move to get rid of Sala and promote Ulbrick. I don't know how you feel about that. I know that's unrealistic, but Jake, we we got to make the playoffs this year, man. And and if the coach is going to hold us back, we could talk about the GM, you know, in another conversation, but what do you think? Eight games? Am I being too harsh? Am I being unrealistic? Am I being crazy? I mean, like, well, they they never have fired a coach in season ever. since Woody Johnson's owned the team. Now, this is a unique circumstance. I I, I get that, but I, I I'd be surprised if anything like that happened. Now, I will say this: I mean, through the first eight games, can they start six and two, five and three? Like, let's go, man! I think getting off to a good start is so important for this team. A hundred percent. And all the people saying, oh, well, Rodgers never gets off to slow starts. It's like, okay, yeah, he's but went one and two before. He's gone two and three. Like, they make it seem like his slow starts are like him going three and six. It's been like a three-game sample size. He starts one and two. It's not a slow start. Like, we should be able to hit the ground running. We absolutely should. And uh, I love him showing up to voluntary workouts. I think the energy with him. So for all the people saying he's like a bad leader and this and that, like, all right, well, why is he showing up to voluntary workouts? He wants his team to obviously – come together he's looking to do something this year he might have some other motives and i think he does in all fairness but so do a lot of players he wants to win with this team we we put together a pretty good roster i would say there's some holes we need to fill especially from an insurance perspective with certain positions but it's our year man to at least make the playoffs you break that streak you know i think we can make a you know we could win a game or two we might be able to make a run and then next year maybe you make your real run if you want to look at it that way but this team's setting themselves up in this two-year window. Sign and if away. we get Brock Bowers, dude, forget <laughs> it, man. We're going <laughs> to... Bower boy. Did somebody say Brock Bowers? <laughs> That's our third-string quarterback, by the way, if we ever needed one. Brock Bowers. I heard he could Brock. throw. He could kick field goals, punter. <laughs> I still think they should take Kenoble, but it is what it is. <laughs> Frankie, I appreciate you, man. Great job. Yeah, Tell people where Jake. they can find you again. Yeah, if you uh, check me out on Twitter, at Frankie Vitz. I'm one of the co-founders of At You Stadium. We're a sports media network. We uh, just launched a new update to our sports app. It's a prediction app. So it's where sports opinions matter. You can basically wager like you would on a sports book, but through your own custom opinions. So if you think the Jets are going to win the Super Bowl, you buy points, you wager points, you can go one-on-one. Me and Jake could go uh, 5K points, which is $5 each. Uh, Jake's accountable. He has to put the money down, so it's not like I have to chase him around for a Venmo. Or you can put it in a pot and see how many people agree or disagree. One side wins, no odds. And, uh, yeah, something we've been working on for a bit. But, yeah, at Frankie Vitz on Twitter – at you stadium company i'm part of and uh yeah i really appreciate you guys you have one of the better shows if not the best jets show jake and your fans are awesome so really appreciate you you having me on brother anytime man we'll do it again soon ladies and gentlemen the great frankie v good job by frankie i'm gonna stay on real quick just clean up some uh these final super chats here kick of dreams just wrote in youtube locked me out yet again this is some bs guys hold it down for me i'll be back on thursday more memberships to come jet up brooklyn New York City, yeah. How is it possible YouTube could stop letting people gift memberships to other people? How does that make any sense? Does YouTube not want to make money? They got a cut of all this. It's their rules, but that's wild. Ray Danger says, oh, I'm sorry, Ray. I didn't see this until after Frankie left. What does Frankie think the odds are JD trades at a 10, which is why he does go up or go down? Also, who are his top three tight ends after Bowers? I believe we did talk about the first scenario, Ray. So maybe you tuned in late. As far as his top tight ends after Bowers, I'll tell you what, I don't know the answer to that. So I'm sorry, right? I missed this. I didn't see it. Uh, Peter writes in, Jake, did the Jets hire a new O-line coach? They hired an offensive line assistant coach. They hired Walter Kuzmerich as an offensive assistant coach. He was previously a college assistant at New Haven, Wagner, Morrisville State. He played college football at Fitchburg State. Supposed to have a good reputation. 
I hope he's good. And I'm going to sit here and pretend like I know a lot about him because I don't. Unbelievable. Hit the like button if you're tuned in right now. Um, let's see. Make sure we didn't miss anything here at the buzzer. I don't think we did. Thanks again to everyone who tuned in. Really fun show. Thanks again to Mando for being a part of it. If you missed it, Mando's back with us. Stop smelling badly. Control your body odor for up to 72 hours with Mando's products. $5 off your starter pack. That's 40% off when you use promo code Jake Asman at shopmando.com. Thanks again to everyone who tuned in. We're going to be back tomorrow. We got the Buffalo Jet fans slated for tomorrow afternoon. We'll have something in the morning for you as well. If you are a Jet fan who's looking to buy the new jerseys, check down below. Use my Fanatics link, and it will link you to some of the stuff we have tagged down below. And once you're on the Fanatics site, you can get all the Jets gear, and you can help support our show in the meantime as well. So hopefully everyone's enjoying the new uniforms, the new logo, all that. I know I am. King of Dreams says, bro, it's BS. I'm pissed. Makes no sense, man. But thank you again, King of Dreams. Thanks to everyone who gifted memberships. 77 in this one show alone. Unbelievable. Really fun. Appreciate everyone uh, for tuning in each and every day. Another day closer to the draft, folks. I know it feels like it's never coming, but eventually it will. Just nine days away until that very day. All right. On the way out, hit the like button. My name is Jake Asman. This has been the Jake Asman Show. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Hey, there we go. Light it up, Ricky. Yeah. Let's get back to your calls right now. One of our favorites is on the uh, Gus Buster hotline. Ricky NY joins us now. What's up, Ricky? Hey, Jake. <laughs> hey, Ricky. How you doing? <laughs> uh, thanks for taking my call, Jake. Uh, I just finished smoking all the available weed in the pan handle, so bear with me if I collapse here and from my personalized flag. Uh, <laughs> any chance you could send that boxing guy, Gary, to the Jameis Winston town? Maybe Gator can build a special hall for quarterbacks who throw more interceptions than completed passes? Well, not a Florida guy, but can go to – has Seminoles all the way there. If you got a whole lot of get all of them in there. I don't give a shit. Well, <laughs> I think I got to relight this thing. Hold on a second. I just got this new blowtorch uh, lighter. Let's try it out. Let's try it. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Should have backed off that setting a bit. Anyway, Jake, I'll hang oh, up for now and grab line. the burn tit again. Later, brother. <laughs> Oh my god. Yo, Gator is different, man. That dude is different. 